is India Rose with the Pearl Girls. I'm here in the Philippines on one of the 7,000 islands that make up the Philippines. We're here today to tour a South Sea cultured pearl farm and we're so excited. There are 23 pearl companies here in the Philippines that have farms throughout the channels between all of the islands. They're responsible for 15% of the world's production of South Sea cultured pearls. What makes South Sea cultured pearls so magnificent is their satiny luster, and they're really known for their large size. They range in size from 8 millimeters in diameter to 20 millimeters in diameter. So they're really gorgeous, and we're so excited to give you a chance to see these pearl farms today. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ian. I'm the operation manager here in the farm, and I'm the second in command here. My wife is the farm manager. Basically, I'm the one in charge of the operation here in the farm. So I will take you to the hatchery where we start the production of the spots until the seeding operation here in the laboratory. So we'll see it all. We're here in the hatchery and we're with a biologist. It's amazing what a scientific process this is. I think it's probably the most important process is the developing the oysters, right? Yeah. They have to live in order for them to produce these pearls. So we've seen the plankton that they have to produce in order to feed the young oysters and the entire growth process up until, until they're two months old and they're returned back to the sea. producing the phytoplankton. At two months old, the oysters are placed into nets and put into the ocean. There they will be monitored and maintained until the two-year mark when they are old enough to be nucleated. Pegging the oysters, getting them ready for nucleation. Here the oyster is ready to be nucleated. Now to nucleate the oyster, what they do is they put a little um, bit of tissue, mantle tissue, into the oyster as well as a little shell that forms the nucleus of the pearl. The mantle tissue, depending upon what type of oyster it came from, that will be responsible for the color of the pearl. So they're trying to produce the golden South Sea pearl. So they will choose tissue from the gold lipped oyster and therefore they know they can produce the golden South Sea pearl. I wanted to show you the gold-lipped oyster up close. South Sea oysters are either gold-lipped or silver-lipped, and you can tell by the ring around the edge of the shell. So this is very clearly the gold-lipped oyster. This is Tessa, and she's responsible for actually cutting the mantle tissue. We weren't allowed to video her doing it because it is a very secretive very process. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay. It's a, she's a magician, and she can't show her tricks, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's in the hands of cutting those tissues to create um, golden pearls. 
Okay, so here she's cut the tissue that's nine, from a nine-month-old oyster. It comes from this oyster. She's just cut that, and she'll insert it into the oyster. Okay, here is the technician. He's taking the oyster and he's preparing. So what he does is he's going to put a little nucleus and a bit of tissue in the reproductive membrane of the oyster. That's where they produce the pearl. Now they're only going to produce one pearl per oyster. Once it's returned to the sea, it'll stay there for two years before they produce the pearl or before it is significantly big enough and has enough knacker. You can see the little nucleuses that he uses. They actually come from a Mississippi River mussel. That's the best bead or piece of shell used to nucleate these South Sea Pearl. After the pearl has been nucleated, he adds it back to the net, so then it'll be returned to the sea. And he continues. So he'll nucleate between 400 and 600 oysters a day. Okay. The tissue will then form a pearl sac, and then after the pearl sac has been formed, it will start coating the tissue, and then a pearl will be formed. So after that, um, it will be sent back to the sea for cultivation for two years. So we can only produce um, pearls here in the Philippines after two years upon operation. They x-ray them and you can see that um, he might put one on there for us so we can see it on the screen. So what he does is um, he x-rays to see if there is a pearl inside the oyster. It, you know, depending upon the batch of oysters, up oh, and there it is, and there's a pearl inside. It'll still be returned to the ocean for another year. Um, so it continues making a pearl. Um, depending upon the batch, 50 to 80 percent of the oysters will actually have a pearl inside of them. It can vary by technician, what technician actually nucleated the pearl. Some are better than others. All these oysters have to be kept up with. And here is a map. It is duplicated on computers. They've got this information in many, many places. They have the nucleated oysters as well as the young oysters that are growing to become old enough to be nucleated. So they keep track of the, what they're called are long lines. And they're long lines held up by buoys in the sea to hold all of the oysters. So this is the entire area. It's 500 hectares. And it's constantly patrolled and monitored so they won't get robbed.